Welcome back here with Newsday. More now on one of our top stories. There are calls for the Prime Minister to intervene and shut down the Dondale Detention Centre. It follows new claims of abuse at the notorious facility. Joining us live now is Darwin Barrister John Lawrence. John, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Our reporter Matt Cunningham took us through this story a bit earlier this hour. He talked about claims that blood smeared across a cell wall was left for several hours, allegations that independent observers hadn't been showing up nearly as regularly as they're meant to be doing. I understand you represent an 11 year old being held there. From your interaction with him and your experiences with that facility, do any of these claims released today, do they come as a huge surprise to you? Not really, but they do, they are new in the sense that they reveal gross breaches of the law. Now, their own law passed by this government in relation to the visitors. But just following up from my client, the 11-year-old, uh, just for your viewers to appreciate the barbarism and the backwardness and the unlawfulness of all this, this child is Indigenous, he's 11 years of age. He has spent over three months in what is called Don Dale, which of course is a condemned adult jail. And for weeks of those three months, that 11-year-old spent in isolation in a cell, three by three, on his own, toilet, mattress, shower, uh, sometimes 22 hours off the day, on his own, a child who has been psychologically assessed for the court as being cognitively impaired, which would probably apply to the majority of these children. They're all Indigenous. 70% of them are on remand. And what I am describing is nothing less than or more than child abuse, direct, deliberate, willful child abuse, which is unlawful. And I can say as a practitioner of over 30 years in this jurisdiction, who's gone through the, the, the Four Corners report, the Royal Commission, the recommendations, the ignoring of the same, that this juvenile justice system now is completely off the rails and needs to be, there needs to be an intervention for this to end because as night follows day, there will be, dare I say it, but I must, an Aboriginal child death in custody. The self-harm numbers are astonishing. There's over 100 self-harm incidents, including attempted suicides within a 12-month period, which have increased rapidly. Now, unless this place is shut down yesterday, there is going to be worse to follow, and that can happen. And this government up here will never do it, nor will the opposition, but it can happen at the stroke of a pen by the Federal Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, whom our movement have written to directly, the Prime Minister, whom our movement has written to directly, and with support perhaps from the Greens, we've spoken and written directly to Senator uh, Lydia Thorpe and Adam Brandt, they could pass a, a law shortly, which would basically make it unlawful for the further continued, continued detention of children in this hellhole. John, none of us like to think of children behind bars. It is heartbreaking on so many levels. Nobody wants that outcome for these kids. If the government was to shut down Dondale, though, what is the alternative? What would happen to the children who are currently inside? What would you like to see happen to them? Well, in my opinion, there are too many in detention per se. As I mentioned earlier, 70% of them are on remand. A, a, a proportion of those kids could probably be bailed to go back out to country. A lot of them are from regional out centres, Aboriginal communities. That could happen. But there are other facilities around. Uh, ironically, and it's almost wicked, really, the original Dawn Day was lying empty. That had 24 rooms that held boys and girls, rooms, not cells, that could be either revamped in a short period of time or it could be bulldozed and rebuilt. The NT government will come up with tripe, which is we're building a facility which is going to be Shangri-La, uh, even although it's built adjacent to the adult prison, which was against directly one of the recommendations. And it's not going to be built until the end of next year, which probably means 2.14. That is a long time to continue barbaric, inhuman 
and unlawful practices towards our most cherished product, children. And this has to end as soon as possible. And it can if only the federal government would intervene and not sit on their hands. Well, the government does make the point that it is you know, putting a massive investment into that new facility that you just referred to there. And, and as we know, building such a facility just can't happen overnight in terms of the timeline of these things. I think the broader point as well is about the age of criminal responsibility. Obviously, this has been on the agenda for years in this country. Are we getting any closer to that? What are the major hurdles to making that change? All right. Let me deal with there. There's two points there you've made. And one of them that they're building Shangri-La uh, at great expense. Now, they've had five to six years to build the appropriate facility in accordance with the recommendation, which was don't build it near the adult prison. After five to six years, they're eventually building one adjacent to the adult prison. That's nowhere near good enough. They've had five years to replace uh, the facility. The other point you make is that the... Um, oh, I can't remember. What was the other point you made? Oh, I was just um, raising the issue of lifting the age of criminal responsibility in this country and the fact that yeah. it's been on the agenda for so long, yet no change so far. Mm. Red herring. Red herring, red herring. This thing's... Th that issue has been going on forever and a day. It maybe one day will eventually be raised to 14, but it's neither here nor there as far as the predicament of these 10, 11, 12-year-old boys and girls are concerned. And people that are representing people in the federal parliament have to get off this slow boat to China and act. And putting it off by saying we're going to raise the age is just a detour. This needs urgent action. The Prime Minister needs to intervene. The Attorney General needs to intervene. He knows only too well, Mr Dreyfus, because he worked up here as a lawyer, the difficulties that exist. And there is no good reason why the government can insist on this place being shut down immediately. They could pass a law within weeks that basically makes the continued detention of children in the current Don Dale facility unlawful, and that's it. Then they'd have to move those children out. Some would get bail. Some would go to an alternative appropriate facility. But this needs to happen soon. Otherwise, the, the terrible cancer that afflicts this country, dare I say it, Aboriginal deaths in custody, is going to occur in this facility. The figures in relation to self-harm and attempted suicide are going through the roof up here. They are astonishing. And yet still no one will act. John Lawrence, a Darwin barrister, obviously really close to all of these issues. Really do appreciate you making the time to take us through them. Plenty of food for thought there for the new Albanese government to get into. Thanks so much. Yeah, can I just say before you cut me off that I directly appeal and implore to the Federal Attorney General and the Prime Minister of Australia before it's too late to directly intervene because as night follows day, a child is going to die in this facility. There have already been uh, 100 instances of self-harm over a very short period, which is a huge increase. For goodness sake, step in and make this happen now before the inevitable occurs. Well, we all hope that that isn't an inevitable outcome. John Lawrence, thank you for your time. We appreciate it.